Welcome everyone to Dermatology Explained. Today's talk will be looking at lichenoid drug eruptions and how it compares with lichen planus. So lichenoid drug eruption is a drug eruption which can look very clinically similar to lichen planus, another lichenoid condition. If you haven't seen our video on lichen planus, visit our channel. We've got a series on lichenoid dermatoses. Lichenoid drug eruptions is characterized by violaceous scaling papules and plaques that are typically symmetrically distributed and widespread. Pruritus is a common feature. Classic lichen planocytes such as flexor wrists may be spared in lichenoid drug eruptions. And just as a recap, remember the six P's of lichen planus. The six P's stand for purplish, papule, plaque, polygonal, planar, which means flat top, and pruritic, which is itchy. So who gets or who is susceptible to a lichenoid drug eruption. There's no significant gender bias from the studies which have looked into lichenoid drug eruptions. This condition tends to affect older adults in an age group between 40 to 60 years of age. And many medications have been reported to be associated with a lichenoid drug eruption. Generally, the latency period is two to three months. So what this means is once you take a culprit medication, the skin changes and drug reaction might not occur until two to three months later. However, there have been cases of up to over a year in duration in terms of the latency between taking the drug and the onset of the rash. The lichenoid drug eruption may progress to erythroderma to cover a large surface area of the body. Lichenoid eruptions also favor photo exposed areas. And oral involvement from lichenoid drug eruption is not very common. Which medications are involved in lichenoid drug eruptions? There is a very long list of medications which are known to induce lichen planus. However, some of the key groups to know include antihypertensive medications, which include ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, and calcium channel blockers, diuretics medications, which include hydrochlorothiazide, fruzamide, and spironolactone, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, anticonvulsant medications, such as carbamazepine and phenytoin, antifungal medications, chemotherapeutic agents such as 5-fluorouracil, anti-malarial agents such as hydroxychloroquine, sulfur drugs, other drugs such as allopurinol, as well as checkpoint inhibitors. It is important to know well the list of medications that are associated with the lichenoid drug eruptions so that in your history taking, you're able to elicit whether any of the patient's medications might be the cause of their cutaneous eruption. In terms of the features of a lichenoid drug eruption, it can look very much similar to an idiopathic lichen planus. Some distinguishing features of lichenoid drug eruptions include a symmetrical rash that can involve diffusely on the trunk and limbs. It is often photodistributed. It may be scaly, resembling eczema or psoriasis in some cases. Lichenoid drug eruption typically does not have Wickham striae on the lesions. Lichenoid drug eruption also tends not to involve oral cavity or nails. And it is also more likely to leave pigmentation afterwards. You can see here on the images on the right hand side, diffuse involvement of the torso and limbs by a lichenoid drug eruption. So let's compare lichenoid drug eruption with lichen planus because they look so similar clinically. In terms of the age group, the mean age for lichen planus is 50 years, which is younger than the mean age for lichenoid reactions occurring at 66 years of age. Lichen planus tends to reflect the flexural surfaces and classically, for example, on the flexor wrists, whereas lichenoid reactions tend to occur in chronically sun-exposed areas, such as the face. The lesions in lichen planus exhibit the classic six Ps, whereas the lesions in lichenoid drug eruption can look like classic lichen planus or can have surface changes which resemble eczema, psoriasis, or pityriasis. Wickham striae is present in lichen planus but is usually absent in lichenoid reactions. Lichen planus is commonly seen in the oral cavity, whereas lichenoid reactions tend not to involve the oral cavity. In terms of the histology, there are some differences and similarities between lichen planus and lichenoid drug eruption. In lichen planus, there is compact hyperkeratosis and wedge-shaped hypergranulosis with irregular acanthosis. Classically, there is sore toothing of the retinal ridges and vacuolar damage to the basal layer. There is a dense band of lymphocytic infiltrate at the dermal epidermal junction. In comparison with lichenoid drug eruptions, there is focal parakeratosis and focal absence of the granular layer. The colloid bodies are more numerous and are present higher up in the epidermis. 
the interface infiltrate is less dense. There is more abundant plasma cells and eosinophils in the infiltrate, which tends to be more deep and more perivascular. The treatment also differs. With lichen planus, first-line treatment is corticosteroids, whereas with lichenoid drug eruption, the main action to treat the condition is withdrawal of the culprit or causative drug. This slide further elucidates the differences in the histological findings of a lichenoid drug eruption versus lichen planus. What are the differential diagnoses of lichenoid drug eruptions? Lichenoid drug eruptions can mimic a number of other conditions, including lichen planus, lupus erythromatosus, lichenoid granulomatous dermatitis, keratosis lichenoides chronica, secondary syphilis, viral exanthem, and mycosis fungoides. In terms of the management, lichenoid drug eruptions usually resolve within a few weeks to a few months after discontinuing the culprit offending drug. If the medication cannot be stopped for whatever reason, such as it is an important or life saving medication, for the patient, then reduction of the dose or changing to a alternative but similar medication may be helpful. The eruption symptoms and clinical changes can be treated with topical corticosteroid creams. If it is very extensive and severe, oral corticosteroids such as prednisone can be considered. Thank you for joining us today. We hope to see you next time.